The big thing with monotypes, people don't know what it is. My friend Rhoda in Albuquerque, Rhoda does this kind of work, videotape, uh, Rhoda said a demo of you making a monotype, and they did, it's on YouTube. It's got a, a lot of hits, a lot. Because when people just look at my work, that's one thing, but when they see how, um, how you make it, and then they look at it, they kind of look at it in a different way. Welcome to the Creators, here at Sum City. Coming to you every Tuesday and Friday, extended conversations that build community making for creators videos, by creators. Art, making what you make. Barbara Van Buskirk is a visual artist who has found a home in the seacoast of New Hampshire after beginning her artistic journey in Albuquerque, New Mexico. She's also found an artistic home in Monotype, a technique of putting ink on a plate that is then transferred to paper. So we invite you to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Well, you got to watch the show first. So let's get on with the show. Hi, folks. Welcome back to The Creators, coming to you from some city in beautiful downtown Summersworth, New Hampshire. I'm Tom Jackson, and with us today we have a very special guest, uh, an artist by the name of Barbara Van Buskirk. Welcome to The Creators. Thanks, Tom. Um, the way we usually kick things off uh, in, on The Creators is, so the name of the show is The Creators, and we will often ask, uh, you know, are, do you consider yourself a creator, and what, if anything, in particular, does that word mean to you? Uh, I do, I do think I'm a creator. I think everybody is, and um, to me, that's just I make things. I like, I love to make things, and so I do a lot of different things. I mean, artistically, um, my primary medium is monotype, but I, I um, paint. I have done ceramics. I've done weaving. I knit. I crochet. I. It's in cooking, it's in arranging flowers, it's in everything. I mean, you're creating um, I don't, in so many different ways in life. And I think it just is vital to, um, to the spirit. I think it's food for the spirit. So you mentioned monotype. Yes. And that's a, that's a quite unique style. And for those who might not be familiar with it, can you explain what, what is monotype? Monotype is a printmaking process. It, it um, produces a one-of-a-kind, unique um, piece of um, picture. And how you make a monotype, um, there's a video on YouTube, a demo of me doing it that was made a number of years ago. But you basically take a flat surface, you apply ink in some manner, there's every way you can imagine of doing it. You put a piece of paper on top of it and you either rub it or run it through an etching press. I use an etching press. The ink is the image. So you can put another piece of paper, run it, rub it, and you'll get a lighter impression, which is called a ghost. The ghost you can either have as a standalone image or you can build layers on that. And, and I do both. And I think the most layers I've ever done on one monotype is maybe seven or something like that. And it's fast because the ink will dry. And so when I started doing monotypes, I was working a full-time day job. And this was a way that I could make art and, um, and, and, make art while having a full-time day job. Hmm. And what I use is I use Akua colors, which are water-based inks. And so they clean up with uh, rubbing alcohol and water. That's it. So it's pretty simple method, but the possibilities are limitless. And pretty much, and with other uh, printmaking processes like etching, mezzotint, lithograph, you will have an addition but in monotype, not monoprint, monoprint and monotype are two different things. Monotype, the image is the ink. So it's a one of a kind, um, it's a one of a kind picture. 
and practically any, I started making a list a number of years ago, I started making a list. Practically any artist that you can think of probably has made monotypes. Um, Degas is well known because he made hundreds of them and he used them uh, as underpaintings. Uh, he would often work on them in pastel. A lot of artists would just have, you know, this was just a fun thing to do. They didn't think it was art, it was just a fun thing to do. But most artists have, um, practically everybody, any artist you can think of, it's probably made monotypes at one time or another. Because it's so simple to do, it's really easy. Hmm. Yeah, I was gonna ask you about the, uh, uh, do you know about the origins of of that method? I mean, is yeah. monotype something that goes back a long way? Or? Yeah, it goes back, um, I can't remember exactly the first person, it began with the C, and it was, um, don't quote me, but maybe it was like in the, I don't know, 1700s or something. But um, I started do, making monotypes in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. And when monotypes really, I think, became kind of, um, started to, people became aware of it, there was a huge exhibit um, in New York, I think it was at the Met, um, called the Painterly Print, and it was hundreds of monotypes, many of the Degas monotypes, and that exhibit was at the Met in New York, and then I think it went to Boston. I'd have to look at my website. It, it, then it went to Boston. So basically, where it's been really more visible, so right now it's 2019, so basically 40 years. Mm. And, um, but the process has been around, um, you know, for a few hundred years. And, and people did a, did a lot of monotype in um, the late 1800s and early 1900s. They God did a lot of them. Well, I know in the past you've, you've worked in a number of different types or styles of, of art creation. Um, can you pinpoint what, what is it about creating monotypes that really has kind of captivated you? Oh, I know exactly. Um, well, two things. I had, I, I worked for a living, day job. So um, I would do art. I would paint and work and paint. But I never, you know, it's like you work all day and you're exhausted and you don't, you know, you don't have the time. What I, when I saw the monotype demo, um, it combined, I liked it because it combined um, drawing, kind of, and painting. It was on paper, which is, so the, the, the um, tools to make monotypes is much less expensive, it's not so precious, and um, yeah, and I liked that that um, it was fast. That I could I could do this for a couple of hours after I'd worked all day. And um, the other thing, so that's number one. And number two, I I kind of would get frozen when I was drawing or painting. It has to look this certain way, and if it doesn't look that way, then it's not good. Monotype, you never know. Unlike etching or these, these um, etching or particularly etching, these other printmaking um, processes, monotype, you really never know exactly what it's going to look like until you lift the paper from the plate because it can look one way on the plate, but when you print it, it will look a different way. Hmm. And so uh, a fr friend of mine um, years ago called it the lift. When you lift the paper, when the lift is so thrilling to see what it actually looks like. And then you have to go with that. And that totally freed me up, totally freed me up because it doesn't have, you don't know what's going to happen. So you just have to kind of um, work with, work with it. And so you stop, I stop thinking. You just, it, it, helps a, per, a person, creative person, stop thinking 
and just get into the flow, just get into the zone. Mm -hmm. And anybody can do it. Uh, Frank Duvenek, who was um, an artist in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, and my grandfather actually studied with him in Cincinnati. Um, he, uh, when he was in Germany, he and the Duvenek boys used to uh, make monotypes. He made a lot of them. And they would just have a party. They'd sit around and drink beer and make monotypes. And, <laughs> Sounds yeah. like fun. It, yeah. yeah. I mean, anybody can do it. Yeah. Anybody can do it. It's, it's, it's not hard. It's, um, but somebody who is precise, uh, I knew an artist um, at the group studio um, in Albuquerque, and she did very fine etchings and hand colored these etchings. Mm. She decided she was going to make some monotypes, and she hated it, absolutely hated it because she couldn't control it. She couldn't control it. So you have to be a certain kind of person to like this. But you can, monotypes can look like pastels, they can look like oil paints, they can look like watercolors, they can be monochrome, they can be, um, Matisse did a lot of monotypes. He did a lot of monotypes. Hmm. Um, and he would just do a black plate and then uh, draw take off the ink, reductive, you know, a white line drawing, stunning. So the possibilities are limitless. It's really, it's really fun to do. So the, that bit of uncertainty um, and the willingness to kind of accept the, the maybe lack of precision um, with each, each monotype, I'm guessing that that kind of goes to your, I know that you particularly are drawn to art that is interesting as opposed to yeah. good and bad. Can yeah. you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Um, let's see, how do I explain this? I, th I think that, I don't think good, good and bad are helpful um, adjectives when talking about visual art. I think, I think it's much um, more um, helpful uh, to look at visual art and say to oneself, uh, is that interesting? I mean, if you like something or don't like something, is it because you think it's good or bad? Um, do you don't like it because it's just not interesting to you? Um, to me, pretty much all monotypes are interesting to me. Um, so another thing that we, that we ask about frequently on the show relates to, um, uh, you know, the, the show goes out on YouTube and the internet in general, uh, has, has kind of changed certain things about the way artists try to get their work out mm -hmm. um, uh, in front of people. And, you know, there's some good and some bad related to that, uh, I suppose. Um, how, how has, you know, the modern technology, I mean, you're working in an art form that's relatively... Uh, uh, I, I don't know if we would call it ancient, but it's it's been around for quite a while, as you mm -hmm. explained. Um, how has the uh, the internet and you know I know you have your own website is has modern technology had much of any effect on your uh, uh, work in art or or not much? It's been good. Um, so I started Monotypes in two thousand. I was working with a fellow, a guy. He's my web guy. Um, Steve Sergio, um, and he was working in the department at UNM that I was working in. He was a kind of freelancer consultant, and he was doing working um, with a staff member there on um, websites. This was in 2000, which were, were not were kind of new then. I mean, and and distance education, all this stuff. He told me I was doing these monotypes. I've been doing them maybe a year, and he said you need to have a website. And I said, what's, what, why? He says, just trust me, you do. 
And so he's been doing my website. I mean, I I do the content writing now. We switched it over to WordPress, but he designed my website. And he and we've had that for 19 years. And the good thing about that, the good I I like monotype because I like the touch of the hand. I like to see the touch of the artist's hand. And and t with technology, uh, it's a I guess the touch of the artist's hand is there, but it's different. Um, so I like, um, I actually like to see brush strokes and, you know, like pottery, the, t the um, basic touch of the artist's hand. Um, but what uh, the website has done is um, that technology is that it's more visible. The big thing with monotypes for all these people don't know what it is. So a big part um, for me of um, monotypes is educating people about what it is. The other thing in that same vein about what is it is then um, Steve and my friend Rhoda in Albuquerque. Rhoda does this kind of work, videotape, you know, she did that. And they said, you need to do a demo because people don't know what this is. And this was, I think this was maybe eight years ago, something like that. And so they said, we're gonna, you know, produce a, Rhoda said, a demo of you making a monotype. And they did, it's on YouTube. It's got a, a lot of, hits a lot um, and again that was a really good thing because which is technology because that helps educate people because when people just look at my work that's one thing but when they see how um, how you make it and then they look at it they kind of look at it in a different way it's a little more interesting you know the biggest question is people say why don't you just paint on paper? Why do you go through this um, printing process? And the reason is because it's that element of surprise. You're not going to get that if you paint on paper. There, it's, there's, you can control that. You need the press or you need the rubbing. You need that piece of it to, um, for that element of surprise that you can work off of. So that so I have a um, I have a art it's Barbara Van Buskirk artist Facebook and I have a website and I have um, and I have um, the YouTube demo um, all of which I was encouraged to do for, by people who are more tech savvy than I am. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was good decisions. It was good advice. Yeah. It was good advice. Yeah. Um, and what's the, what's the address of your website? www B V A N B dot com. B Van B dot com. All right. We'll put that up there for people to see. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned that uh, you first started to get into monotype in probably the, the late 90s. Is that? I saw the demo in 99. Yeah. And then um, the the woman who did the demo was the Albuquerque Art Museum. She had a, a studio, a group studio um, in the South Valley in Albuquerque, which is, um, you know, which is what, like, I don't know. We lived here and this was like over here, far, you know, relatively, Albuquerque's a really big city, mm. uh, kind of far, far away from where we lived. And the very next month, I saw the demo in December of 99 at the Art Museum. And in January of 2000, um, there was a notification that she was moving her, that whole shebang to within t three blocks of our house. And I thought it was a sign. And so I took a workshop and uh, loved it. And I decided I was going to become a member of the group studio for a year. And um, I was going to see if this was just something I dabbled in and I did from time to time, you know, every few years like other things when I had time. Or was this something that was going to keep me interested for the rest of my life? And, and now it's been 19 years. Wow. Yeah. And had you been creating art uh, for a long time prior to, to mm -hmm. that? I started college as an art major, but was... Um, 
discouraged. I had a, my freshman year, I was discouraged by one of my, uh, one of my, my painting teacher. And um, it's a sad story, I won't go into it, but I was discouraged, he discouraged me greatly. And so <clears throat> I switched my major to sociology and then I took all my electives in art. Hmm. So, you know, so I've been, um, I've been drawing since I was a teenager. So I've all, I'm always doing something. I've always been doing something. So in addition to uh, your online presence, um, where else can people see your artwork? I know you've, you've done exhibits, uh, is that throughout New England or where, where can uh, people I, find I've your, done, your um, um, I've done them, uh, well, I did them in Albuquerque. I started exhibiting uh, in Portsmouth within a couple of months when we moved here. So last year, 2018, I exhibited at, um, in a group show at jury show at 100 Market in Portsmouth. I also was in, um, and had done, this was like the third time, was in a juried show at uh, the Barn Gallery in Agunquit last year, and I did that a couple other times. And then also last year, I had a piece accepted into a um, uh, an exhibit in Long in Long Beach Island, New Jersey. I know. How's the one up there? I know. <laughs> I don't know. They, they saw you on the internet. Well, it's the Seacoast Women, this body of work I was um, working on, Seacoast Women. And I decided this. it was done um, in time for, uh, like, last, by last spring. I'd been working on it for a few years. And I decided that the Seacoast Women could only be exhibited in the summer by the ocean. And so... Um, at 100, 100 Market last summer, I had like, I don't know, six pieces or something of the Seacoast women. And so I had other ones, I mean, and so I thought, I'm just, you know, this, this there's this um, website called Cafe, C-A-F-E, and it's free, it's, list, it's a free thing that you just kind of join, but it's free. And it tells you listings, calls for entries all over the country, all over everywhere. Mm. And so you get these, uh, you know, uh, emails. And so I was going through and I saw this exhibit coming up in, I think it was June or, I think it was June or July in Long Beach Island, um, uh, New Jersey. And it met all the criteria. So I thought, what the heck? So I submitted uh, a couple of images and they accepted one. Nice. And the curator was from, um, it's a hot shot curator. Of the, it was from this show. I, for, um, I forget which, one of, the, one of the museums in New York. So I was pretty happy. Very nice. Yeah. And so what's coming up that I know now, this, this uh, conversation with you is coming up and um, my work, actually it's going to be Seacoast Women, is going to be at Ceres Bakery um, on Penn Hollow Street in Portsmouth, opening uh, April 2nd through April 30th of this year. So that's coming up. That's all I know thus far. Excellent. Good to know. Yeah, and we encourage people to uh, to get out there and uh, and check out the wonderful artwork that you have created. Um, Barbara, thank you so much for thank you talking with us on the Creators today. Thank you, it was great. All right, thank you very much. That's it for this time, folks. Thanks so much for joining us, and uh, please uh, give us a thumbs up if you are so inclined, and uh, spread the word uh, about the show where we talk with area artists and creators of all types. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.